So these were dropped off to me yesterday for some repairs. Um, they're quite nice looking windows, especially these with the arches on the top. Um, they're very old, they're cast iron, so got to be a bit careful with them. And as you can see, the hinges are knackered, so they've got to be replaced. But this is the first time I've had a good look at them, so I've got to work out what size hinges I need. And I've actually got to get them yet. Um, this one, the handle is okay on, I think. Yeah, but this one, the hinges are seized up. They've obviously rusted solid over time. They've got to be replaced. And this one, you can see there's a something missing in there. So I've got to make something to go in there. And I've got to do the same on that one. I don't know how these were working in someone's house. Again, seized up hinges. When I first saw these, they were covered in white paint. Thick, thick white paint. These have just come from the shop blasters. You can see those hinges. Someone's welded them on at some stage. And they've seized up, so they've got to be replaced. So, the more challenging one is in here. At first sight, it doesn't look too bad. Until you do this. Yeah, he dropped it when he was taking it out. So, this is going to be a bit tricky. And also this one wants the handle mucking about on. So, what are we going to do? Let's weld her up. So, all I've done is I've put a little V on each of the joins just so I can get some welding. I've set it all up with my magnets, keep it all in place, and then we're going to try tacking her up. Now I'm all, all I'm going to do is use the MIG. I'm not going to bother with cast iron rods. It'll either work or it won't. So let's give it a go. You can usually tell immediately if it's going to work or not. If it just goes completely bubbly, as if you haven't got the gas on, then you know you're pissing in the wind. But this seems to be working. I'm just going to go around and tack very gently each spot. Because I haven't done any preheating or anything. So I'm just going to tack a bit at a time. Take my time. That's sort of got it, so that's okay. So I'm going to let it cool a little bit. Just don't want it to get too hot, and then I shall again, you know, put another spot on each place. I forgot a bit there. Try and let it cool a bit. Turned it over. Try and do the back. hear it moving. Don't like the sound of that. It sounds like it's cracking but I'm not sure if it is or not. I think it's just cooling or expanding or something. Mm, not sure quite what to do with that. I think what I might do is put a bit of heat on it. Yeah, because I don't like the sound of that. Give it a bit of a warm up. It'll either work that way or it won't. It's one of two things. It's either let it cool completely in between each tack, but that takes forever. Try a bit of heat. I think a bit of heat might be working better. That's got most of the world's done. 
So now I'm just going to tidy it up. I've done quite a lot of windows like this, cast iron ones, and depending on the quality, depends whether you get away with it or not. The quality of the steel of the the iron. Generally, the French windows, French made, manufactured, it's usually better quality steel. Well, I am. Um, but you can never tell until you actually start on it so when people come in and say can you do this I say well I'll have a go can't guarantee anything it might break into a million pieces but uh, quite often I have pretty good results and obviously if it doesn't work with a MIG I have then to resort to uh, cast rods which I do have I've got the die grinder a tiny little bit in there I just want to get into a couple more of the cracks because I haven't done right into the cracks that go into where the, the window glass goes. Um, I don't really want to get too far into there. It just means you've got an awful lot of cleaning up to do so that you can get the glass in. So if you can avoid the sections that the glass fit in. Now, just going to change the bit a little tiny round one a little bit more cleaning up a bit more gouging obviously where it's sparking it's where I've already put some weld I just want to put a bit more and make sure it's got it. These windows, when they cast them, they weren't particularly... Um, the moulds obviously weren't particularly good because the, this set is, is actually quite good, but you get some really rough ones. Unbelievably rough. These aren't too bad. I don't think they did much in the way of clean up after the casting. Obviously just a few of the worst flashes. Right, let's have a quick look. It doesn't look particularly pretty, but it's, as I say, because they're so rough anyway, by the time that's all powder coated again, guessing they're going back uh, white as they were came out you'll never see it and the glass once the glass is in it's all putted in they'll actually look pretty damn good now this is going to be the tricky bit I've got to put the hinges back where it was broken I did ask the the guy if I could move the hinges into some better stronger bit of window but he said no really because the frames are all cut out for the hinges in those particular spots so it's going to be a bit of a challenge is fitting the wind uh, fitting the hinges back where the there's a been a break so I could do all this and then find I screw the hinge on and it snaps again but it doesn't look too bad Blind man will be pleased to see it. As I say, once that's up, that one's going to be particularly tricky. I might actually put another little bit of weld on the inside of that one. But we'll see. So, that's that bit sort of finished for now. I'll try and tighten this um, handle up. Now these are just peened over at the back, so well actually that one's pretty loose, which I wasn't expecting. So I'll take that out. I'm hoping, you can see there there's, there's something's been done before, I think this is a second repair anyway, there's two rivets or something already there and the, the hole that that's been 
fixed to. It looks like an afterthought, so I think these handles have been put on afterwards. I can't remember which way that went. Ah. I think it's that way. I'm hoping I can just use the original spacer and tighten that up a bit more. Hoping I've got enough thread left. I can just tighten it down more and then re-peen it over. So it's still loose there, but if I can give it a... Yeah, I reckon that's going to work if I... Yeah. That's not bad at all. It's got a bit of a high spot. So it goes a bit tight. But it's also close to the glass because it appears to have a bend in it there. So I'm just going to take it out and try and knock that bend out. So that it's a bit further away from the glass. You can just see it there. So I can get your fingers behind it a bit better. Right, well that was a waste of time. I put it on the anvil, gave it a tap and it snapped like a carrot. So I've just welded it back up, but this time I've welded it straight. Um, let's see if that will work. It didn't occur to me these were cast as well, I just I didn't even think. I thought they were forged, but they're obviously cast as well. I've got to be a bit careful with those. That's not too bad. I want to tighten it up so it goes slightly tight. Now then, have we got enough to peen it? Yes, we have. Uh, I'm a little bit sceptical about doing it because there's not a lot, and I, if I miss, I could break that. But it's got to be done, I think. It's either that or do it with centre pops. Let's try and peen it. So I could just centre dot around the edge, which might be easier, but not quite as nice looking. So I'm just going to gently tap away, away at this until it's just tight enough that it's not going to undo. That'll do it. Thing will focus. Come on, focus. There you go. You see that's peened over quite nicely. By the time that's powder coated, you'll never really see it. So, see if it works properly. It's a bit tight there, but loose there, which is okay when it's up. And then actually that works quite well because it goes nice and tight when you do it up. But I'm sure a bit of use and that will soon ease up. So I've just got to do the others now and replace the hinges on this. But as I say, I haven't actually got them yet, so that's a job for tomorrow. So next day, I've been up to the uh, store and bought some hinges. Just some very basic 2-inch hinges. Now this one's got to go on here, and this is where it was broken. So I'm a bit cautious about trying to drill into that spot. But that hole there is too big anyway. So I think what I'm going to do is try and braze that one on there, use that um, screw, and if I can get another one in there, I'm going to try. Um, but I think I'll try and braze them rather than screw it in, so I'm not putting any undue pressure on it. Hmm, looks like I'm not going to be uh, putting any holes in there at all. That has gone like concrete. Um, I think it's the combination of the cast iron and the weld has really toughened it up. I've had this before if you weld onto uh, cast iron. Plus, the original hinges were welded on here anyway, so it could could have been the, the rod that whoever welded the hinges on used. There's a traces left there. So that's scuppered that idea. I think I'm back to my first idea of just brazing the whole thing on. I shall use that screw as a location and then braze the whole lot up and hopefully that will uh, strengthen it a little, bit as, a little bit as well. So let's see what we can do. Not ideal, but that's the sort of things you come across in these sort of jobs. 
that looks like it's tightened that screw up quite nicely. Get some heat on it. Now what, what amazes me about this cast iron is it started to crack when I was welding. But I'm going to put a hell of a lot of heat in here. And it probably won't do a thing. I don't quite understand it. It's, it's a, a peculiar material, cast iron. It really is. It's got that end. Difficult to get the cast hot without burning the, the hinge. I think we're managing. Do that. I'll leave that at that, I think. I'll clean that up once it's gone cold. Alright, this is the other end. Now, I'm going to try and do the same thing here, drill it, but I might have the same problem because the other hinge was welded on here as well. So, it is pretty tough but at least this one is looks like it might go hmm doesn't want to that's for sure really doesn't and that's a pretty sharp bit or it was Ah, oh, got through that one. Let's see if we can get through this one. Right, now let's see if we can tap it without busting my tap on the hard bits. Oh yeah, you can tell where it gets to the hard bit. It doesn't want to go. But we got there. Result. How much easier was that than mucking about brazing? Right, whack the hinge on, job done. That end. Quickly get these in. Now you can see there straight away. It's not straight, so that's a bit of a bummer. No, definitely ain't straight. Again, uphill or downhill, so I'm going to have to alter that because that will really put strain on that side of the hinge when it's attached to the window or to the frame. So we'll have to have that off and put a bit of a file mark in there, just file it out a bit and see if we can um, just make enough room to move it over a bit, a bit out of there and a bit out of there should do it. You can see from the holes that they're pissy eyed but uh, with that stuff being so hard I had to drill where it would drill. I wanted to get these hinges in brass, but they didn't have any. Which was a bit of a pain. Because these um, steel ones will obviously seize up again like the originals. In time. Hopefully not for a very long time. I don't know how old these windows are, but they've obviously been fettled by other people over the years having hinges welded on and bits welded up I saw on a, one of them an old weld where someone's obviously done a repair and uh, different handles etc so they obviously get taken out periodically and mucked about with and last for another generation. I don't think I'd like them in my house, that would be a bit chilly. 
I bet they let the air, the wind through like nobody's business. Right, let's tidy this end up. Now it's gone cold. Take off the uh, like. Um, what do they call it? Crust. Go daft. The flux causes like a, a glaze on it. And get that off. There we go. So that'll do. Clean up the inside now. Same sort of thing. Take the glaze off and rub that down flat so that uh, it doesn't interfere with the, the glass when that goes in. There's not a lot of room to get the glass in these. It's only about a, probably three sixteenths. So you've got to get putty or whatever they use these days in the glass. You ain't got a lot of room, so you don't want anything sticking in the into the framework. That's better. If you can see, that's nice and flat now. Hopefully that will hold that hinge in for a very long time. Similar thing this end, we'll take those screw heads off or screw threads off. Nice and flat. And that's that one sorted. And that was the last one. I've done all the rest. Took overall took about six and a half hours to do the whole lot. And something I noticed: some of these windows are glazed on the inside, like this one. See, the glazing bead is on the inside. So you put the glass in from the inside. And yet these ones. You put the glass in from the outside. If you have a look. And at first I thought I'd put the handles on the wrong side. But then I looked at the hinges that on the ones I haven't changed the hinges on and there it was it was right. So obviously different manufacturers perhaps um, make them to be glazed different ways. I don't know. I'll have to ask my man when he comes in, when he comes to collect them. These will now get shipped off to the powder coaters. I don't know if they'll shot blast them again because they've obviously started to go a little bit rusty. I don't quite know where he's had them. And this one I notice, whether it's over the years, someone has drilled for hinges on the wrong side. Whether that was just an error. Because you wouldn't really want to put hinges on the same side as the handle. So these have obviously been through lots of people's hands over the years. So there you are, ready for another generation.